Okay, so at this point you should be taking a look at TED Talks analysis number two, the results with the second TED Talks activity. You completed this activity in class and you should see a grade on your practice assignment. This grade, of course, indicates how well you would have done had you turned this in as a final assignment for the in-class activity. As you take a look at your results, you'll want to understand how to improve your work so you can earn your highest grade possible and understand the concepts. Here we are on the TED Talks Analysis model example. And of course the model example can be found here in the English 8 Rhetoric Bundle in My Big Campus. Click that link and you can access the Google Doc. As you look at the TED Talks Analysis, you will realize that the model example contains both Part 1 and Part 2. This is a complete analysis of Neil Harbison's I Listen to Color Speech. So scroll down below this horizontal line and you can go to the content section, the message section. This is what you're completing for TED Talks analysis number two. So focus on this and take a look first at your grading rubric. This is a grading rubric referring to your performance on the TED Talks analysis number two in class practice. As you see the scores, you'll notice they range from three to zero. A zero we will not discuss. That simply means that you did not answer the question. A three means that you answered it and understand very well what's going on you've explained with enough detail to demonstrate your mastery of the concepts. A 2 or a 1 should concern us. A 2 indicates that you understand the concepts but you're not explaining them fully. Take a look at my model example to understand how to explain the concept fully. A 1 indicates that you are not understanding the concept and of course I'm about to help. But don't forget that the model example contains annotation that can help as well. So scroll through your rubric and note what you are doing well and what you are doing not so well and focus on those problem areas. Let's take a look at the model example. Main idea. The main idea should be a single sentence and this main idea should be the topic sentence if this person were writing an entire paragraph or a thesis if this person were writing a thesis. The main idea should focus on exactly what the topic is specifically and clearly. The biggest student problem with this is not explaining the idea clearly. Avoid vague terminology like thing. Make sure to explain clearly such that an audience that has never seen this speech can understand exactly what the speech is about. I'll repeat that. Your analysis should explain to an audience that has never seen this speech what the speech is about. You must strive for that clarity. Want to test that? Show this analysis to someone who has not seen the speech and ask them if this clearly shows what the speech is all about. Focus on this with the main idea. The next section is purpose and purpose should not merely repeat the main idea section. Here this shows what the speaker wants out of the audience. The main idea is the topic of this talk and the purpose is why the speaker is presenting this topic. So we can see that Harbison's main idea is that people should become cyborgs by enhancing themselves with technology. His purpose is to persuade his audience for a change. Notice that I have stated it is a social change. Read the annotation on social, com commercial, or political purposes. The social change is for them to change their life through technology. I'll read. Harbison wants to persuade his audience of a social change. He believes his life has been improved through technology, so he wants others to do the same. He seems to have no commercial or political purpose. Simple, direct, and to the point. Explain exactly what Harbison wants when he walks on stage. Organization. You will find in English analysis and writing that organizational techniques for information are crucial. You'll see discussion of those techniques on standardized tests and English teachers throughout your career will ask you to recognize their differences. Organizational techniques like narrative, which is storytelling. Process, which is step-by-step -step sequencing. Categorization, which indicates categories with examples to demonstrate the category's qualities. Exemplification, which shows examples of a given concept. Here's Harbison. Harbison uses exemplification. He gives examples of his change in perception. He uses a small amount of problem solution when he speaks about his technology solving his visual problem. Clear and to the point, but let's see what I've done. I clearly identify what Harbison is using here. 
exemplification. And then I talk about what the examples are. Examples of his change in perception. He uses a small amount of problem solution when he speaks about his technology solving his visual problem. Again, I have identified the organization and briefly shown how he uses that organization. So identify an organizational technique and explain how the speaker uses it. And note that I have indicated he uses two. One is primary, one as secondary. So if you feel that your speaker uses multiple modes of organization, which is very probable, then you should explain both clearly. The evidence section often leads to low scores because students do not simply write bullet points. I want you to list each piece of evidence in bullets. The evidence for Harbison are the colored cloths he holds up to his head, the discussion of sounds in a supermarket and food, exp explanation of his passport image, the playing of sound portraits, the playing and showing of sound paintings, and the discussion of ultraviolet and infrared expansion. These bullet points clearly but simply show what each piece of evidence is about. You should consider how your speaker develops ideas step by step, and each of those steps could be a piece of evidence in the bullet points. If you're struggling with this because you have trouble maintaining the organization verbally, remember that the TED Talks website includes the opportunity for a transcript. Let me show you how to do that. We'll go to the link for Harbison's talk. I will pause it. Right here, you can show transcripts. Choose a language, English, and you can see a text of everything that he says. If you wanted to, you could copy and paste this text out into a Google Doc to make it easier. But if you're having trouble keeping track of what Harbison says, or your speaker, then simply appeal to the transcript. Going back to the model example, that was the evidence section. Be clear. Students are often unclear, and they only show a couple pieces of evidence as opposed to evidence throughout the entire speech. Sufficiency of evidence is often a challenging concept for students. We discussed this with Harbison's speech. We decided that he does not provide enough evidence because he only provides an example from his own life. As you are answering this, be sure to answer that question first. Is there enough evidence to support the main idea? Yes or no? And then explain your reaction. Yes, because the speaker provides evidence from a variety of different areas. No, because the speaker provides only small amounts of evidence from his or her own life. No, because the evidence does not seem very clear. No, because the speaker did not use statistics or scientific data when he or she should have. Yes, because the speaker has provided enough examples to show the concept, and all the speaker wishes to do is show the concept. The answer to sufficiency of evidence can take a variety of forms, and I am not grading you harshly on whether or not you're accurate. I'm grading you on whether or not you are following the form. Answer the question, and then provide an explanation for why you answered that, and you'll be fine. Emotional appeals. Emotional appeals refer to the emotions that the audience feels after and during the speech. So focus on what you believe the speaker wants the audience to feel. Some students have written that no emotion is present, and that is rare. Be sure that you are confident no emotion is present. Most speakers wish to entertain their audience and delight them. Some wish to make them angry. Some wish to make them afraid. Some wish to make them amazed or inspired. You can see what I've done here with Harbison. Harbison delights his audience. They laugh at jokes, so they feel happy. His story is also inspiring. I've clearly indicated two emotions that Harbison is looking to trigger in his audience. Those are all the questions for TED Talks analysis number two. You've probably noticed these two questions, rhetorical device and effectiveness of message. But we haven't discussed rhetorical devices in class yet, so hold off on those last two questions. We'll get to them after our lecture and discussion of rhetorical devices. Right now, you should be able to answer everything from main idea 
down to emotional appeals. Hopefully this discussion has targeted some of your weaknesses and helped you understand how to fix them before the in-class assessment.